This is a video series focusing on the recently released OpenAI Responses API, and we're trying to compare it to the Chat Completions API. So OpenAI just released the Response API, as you said. What exactly did they announce? The Responses API is part of a new framework that OpenAI recently announced. So before that, you had to patch together a lot of different low-level APIs. Now OpenAI is bringing three built-in tools, a new API that's called Responses API, but also an open source agent SDK to make building agency frameworks a lot easier. So the Responses API that we're going to focus on now is a bit like chat completions, except that it has the ability to do more agentic tasks. So this API is really the foundation for building action-oriented applications with built-in tools. And that's why the agent SDK is really built upon like this responses API. And the LDR is that it changes a lot based on the tool use and state management. So really encourage you to, to try it, uh, for example, in Databricks. Amazing. So what is the TLDR? What do developers need to know that was recently released? So the most important things that you'd need to know as a developer right now is that first you're going to get a simplified interface and also you have now native support for built-in tools like file search, which is basically RAG on OpenAI, web search to search the internet, computer use to complete tasks on the computer, and you also have function calling so that the model can access external systems and data. So build like tailored tools that you build yourself. It also changes a lot the conversation state management because now with the Responses API, you can create stateful interactions with the model where you're going to use the output of previous responses as input and also has reasoning support. So, you know, when you use reasoning models, you can have a parameter that adjusts the level of effort, low, medium, high. And also there's a new developer role now for prompts. So you already had system user assistant roles. Now we have this developer role that gives you more granular control uh, without making your system prompt too big. High level, this is what it is. And then we're going to deep dive into each component. Excellent. So as of now, we're talking about the Responses API, but before there was this Completions API. So what are the differences? So Chat Completions API was released last year, I think around a year ago. And at that time, API interaction was really text in, text out. Mm -hmm. Then OpenAI introduced multimodality, so images, audio, etc. But the reason they came up with a new API is that they wanted to have an API primitive that is flexible enough, that supports multiple turns, supports tools. And so they decided to adopt a first principles approach when they design the best API for these tools. And so this new API is called the Responses API, but chat completions is still very much maintained. So are there things supported by the chat completions that are not yet supported by the Responses API or vice versa? Yeah, so I was checking the documentation just this morning. And so audio is coming soon to the Responses API, as well as Code Interpreter. Search, computer use, Code Interpreter are not supported by checked completions, where, where, whereas they are for responses, well, with the exception of Code Interpreter, which will be in responses soon. So if, if I have been developing with the Chat Completions API, should they panic then? Should you panic? Um, no, because the, so first there's backward compatibility. So the Responses API is really a superset of the Chat Completions API. So everything you can do with Chat Completions can also be done with Responses. It's just that Responses has more features. Also checking the documentation, OpenAI announced that they will support Chat Completions indefinitely, but, I mean, my opinion is that responses seems to be very much the new standard. So I don't know what you think, but probably for new projects, maybe you should start using responses instead. And maybe for existing projects, try to think of, you know, like maybe planning for your migration. Yeah, What's exactly. really going to change is really the assistant API, because 
they developed the responses API based on the feedback that they got about the assistance API beta version. And all the improvements are in the responses API. So when they achieve the full parity between the assistant and the responses API, they're going to announce a full uh, deprecation of the assistance uh, API with the target set right now that should be around mid-2026. And then on the efforts required to migrate, just to clarify, those are just API features that simplify what you had to do before, especially when you do like multiple API calls and you leverage functions, etc. But you're not changing the models here. So basically, OpenAI just built lots of what used to be done with custom logic with chat completions, but the models don't change. It's just that some models may be available through responses API only if they use built-in tools or like if they trigger multiple model generation turns behind the scenes. Amazing. So we talked about the completions API, the responses API, and what about the agent SDK? So what has been announced on that front? Yes, I think that could be a separate video altogether. So we'll probably do like a video series just on the agent SDK that was released. But the TLDR is that to make building apps easy, OpenAI released an SDK last year that was called Swarm. And so it was about agent orchestration. And now the agent SDK was taking Swarm and making it production ready. So you just do pip install, OpenAI agent. So just to give you an idea of what it is, it's a bit similar to like Langgraph, Crea, etc. All the all the, the agent frameworks out there. So by default, it's using the responses API under the hood, but anything that fits the chat completion shape can also work with uh, the agent SDK. So mm -hmm. if I share my screen real quick, I can show a quick example of what that looks like. This is a travel in a little bit later. Is it better now? So this is a travel planner agent that I built. It's very basic, basically. So I'm loading the API key, etc. And here I'm defining some functions, some tools. And here the agent setup is as easy as giving it a name, giving instructions to the to the agent, and providing it tools that it can leverage. So there's the custom functions that I defined above. So look up countries, search attractions, and then also some of those built-in tools that, uh, that OpenAI provides now. And so here, this would uh, be like a, a little travel agent that you can uh, chat with to, to plan your, your trips. That's a very high level. So back to responses versus chat completion API. Should we take a quick look to see the differences in the code? Yes. So everything's going to be available in GitHub. What I tried to do was every time providing an example of what the like, responses API looks like versus chat completions with the documentation, because obviously things are changing very quickly. So with chat completions, you'd use client chat completions create. Now with responses, the difference is that you use client responses create instead. So instead of wrapping everything into a message array as shown here, you can now use a simple input string. So I really love it. It's much, mm, much it's simpler. much sim yeah, much simpler. Yeah, Yes, and the output is also easier uh, to get because you can now access response dot output uh, text instead of navigating through, you know, this like choices, zero. I always thought it was a bit, you know, verbose mm -hmm. for, for the API. So I think it's, it's much better, but it's not just a syntax difference because also when you get a response back from the responses API, instead of a message, you receive a tapped response object with its own ID and the responses are stored by default. And so also for chat completions now, they're stored by default for new accounts. So one thing to note, I think I put it there. If you want to disable storage when using uh, the API, either chat completions or response, set store to false, for example. Yes, yeah, so they have 
got the feedback and they just simplified a lot of things that before you had to code more to get out. Yes. And also you have an idea associated to the response to the reference sets, which is very useful. Nice. That's it.